So we have a great little uh, webinar we're going to be doing today. And one of the reasons I wanted to do it was there's a lot of changes that have been happening in our market as of late. We've seen shifts in pricing for the first time in a while, shifts from a buyer's to from a seller's to a buyer's market in some areas. Um, there's not if if anyone has not spoken about inflation, they must be uber wealthy because inflation is on the tip of everyone's tongue. We used to all talk about real estate. Now we're talking about inflation and rising interest rates and how that will affect us. We've seen um, some changes to our market because of them. We also, uh, behind the scenes, City Hall has been making some decisions that not many people know about, and they're going to directly affect affordability in the Toronto area. And then that'll, that'll trickle off into the suburbs as well. So it's going to affect the entire GTA with some decisions from Toronto City Hall. And we're going to talk about that as well. So let's start our slides here. We're basically going to break this down into five parts. And the first part is going to be, is going to be why no, now is one of the best times to invest in pre-con in this decade. And I know when you talk to realtors, now is always the best time. In reality, yesterday was the best time to buy. But since we can't, we don't have time machines, we have to do the second best, and that is today. And I'm going to talk about, briefly explain why you should not sit on the fence in a way that you should definitely buy. The second part is going to be an inside look at the current real estate market. We're going to look at some, um, some trends. We're going to look at some stats to see what has actually happened to prices. I am going to explain to you how, although we've seen price drops in a lot of areas um, over the course of the past year, we are still positive and real estate has gone up as a whole. And number three, we're going to talk about what happens to rents as interest rates rise and sales slow. Now, sales volumes has dropped like a rock in water. Um, we're at 40% of what we were selling before. And what happens to the rental market when people start selling and buying less? Um, number four, what City Hall has done that will skyrocket prices. And this is really a big thing. Um, the number one profiteer from any development is the government, not the developer. And I'm going to break that down with some accurate numbers and some from some research that we put together, talking to developers, talking to people, City Hall, all that stuff. And number five, as everyone knows, why a lot of people watch us is they want to find out what's coming, what hot project is going to be coming. And I have a special guest, Steve Sisikian, vice president of Emblem Developments, an old friend and colleague, and he's going to be telling us um, about Design District, the landmark project for Hamilton, starting in a few short weeks and we are blessed to have Steve with us. So let's begin. We have a lot to talk about tonight, folks. So why now is one of the best times to invest in pre-con in this decade? Well, as the market has cooled as a whole, and, and really what's cooled is the resale market, and especially resale low rise. But what is that has done, and whether you want to say it's a result of interest rates, it's a result of inflation, it's a combination of both, I think it more has to do with buyer fatigue. Um, and we had seen unprecedented and unsubstantiated price jumps in low rise across the GTA over the past, pretty much from the start of COVID, but especially in the last quarter of 21 and the first quarter of 22, we saw six months of rapid, rapid price growth, unprecedented um, amounts. And I think a lot of buyer fatigue set in. And a lot of buyers decided to back off and wait. And that is basically what we're seeing now. But because of that, um, sales have slowed as a whole. And that's trickled it a bit into pre-con. Although pre-con is still selling well, it's not at the same pace. And because of that, developers are actually pricing their product right now a little bit under what their original pro forma had stated. So they're going back a bit on the profit, squeezing their margins even smaller. And that's a great time for us, the consumer, to actually pick up a unit. So we're getting really good deals if there could ever be a deal in real estate in Toronto. And we're getting them now. A second reason is that we are on the cusp of some serious significant changes to how real estate is priced. And we're going to see 10% price jumps pretty much overnight. Um, at the end of this year and into next year. And that's a direct result of some government decisions. 
which we'll go into later. But you're going to be paying a lot more if you wait six months to a year as opposed to buying now. And this has nothing to do with construction costs. This has nothing to do with developer greed. It has nothing to do with anything except government greed. And you do really don't want to wait, okay? And a third thing is as sales slow and projects get delayed, less product will come to market in four to five years from now. So when we already have a scarcity of real estate and then less products coming to market, but as we're going to explain later on, demand is continuously increasing, you're going to have more people wanting even less of a product. And simple economics means if demand is higher than the supply, prices are going to go up. So that is in a nutshell, three good reasons uh, why now is one of the best times to buy. And I'm also going to throw in one more thing. Deposit structures are continuing to be further extended than traditional, okay? It started during COVID, but now a lot of developers doing that final 5% bringing you to 20 at occupancy as opposed to two years. So you're putting less down over a greater amount of time, allowing you to keep that money with you so it can be generating um, revenue for you, interest in other investment streams at the same time. You are going to hear in many real estate conversations, there's going to be, if there's a group of people talking, there's always going to be one individual who's telling you that they're waiting for prices to go down. Now, prices are not going to go down for pre-construction. And look at what's happening from a developer aspect. Land is not getting cheaper to purchase. Um, development charges, the city's raised by 49%. We're going to get into that. Okay. Um, Inclusionary zoning, we're going to talk about that. Is that basically, developers are going to lose 5% of all their units and lose the revenue from that. So those are three things. And construction costs. Construction costs have gone up 20% okay, over the course of basically this year. So there's been huge increases in construction costs. And it's becoming more expensive to build, more difficult to build. So how are they going to build for less? And the misconception is, oh, if they can't sell at that price, then they're going to lower prices. But if they really lower prices because their margins are so small, it won't be financially fiscally sound to build. So if it's not fiscally sound to build, instead of selling, you just don't build or you delay. And what happens is the longer they delay, less new inventory comes to market four or five years from now. So two reasons why they're not going to go back down. But let's look at the demand aspect. There is a 2.4 million person backlog to get into this country. Okay, that's, that's a backlog of 2.4 million immigration applications. So we are letting people in at record numbers. Um, There's something I read today that Canada is one of the top four countries for immigration Google searches. So where people are Google searching countries that they want to immigrate to, Canada is top four in the world. Okay, we have 400,000 people coming in every year for the next few years that's already determined close to half of them are going to be coming to the greater toronto area which is already going to further increase the demand um, for housing so it's 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 if you look at economics if you look at expenses there's no way they're not going to come down okay so here's another reason that i love condos those hyper fluctuations that we saw in low rise the jumps and the drops Okay, that has not occurred with condos. So condos are consistently increasing in price. So if you're going to bet on a horse, bet on the horse that's the most consistent. And you're not going to hear anyone who bought a condo at the peak and then three months later, their appraisal didn't come in. That's not happening with these, but that did happen for a few months earlier this year with low rise. An inside look at the current real estate market. So here are some stats and everybody likes some, some stats because you know, we can visualize them. So we, we learn both audio and visual ways. Now, here's some numbers and we're looking at basically March, April, May, and June, okay? And these are resale condo market stats. So if you look at the numbers of sales, the number of sale, sale units, they're started to, volume started to drop for March, April, May, and June. So less inventory is changing hands. While less inventory is changing hands, prices are still, you know, we saw a couple of drops, we saw some fluctuations, but prices aren't really too bad 
there were some drops, but you know, as a whole, and you can't take it literal and say one month went up a thousand dollars and the other month went down 1000 because different products are also going, but you basically get an understanding of what's happening. Condo prices are staying strong. Sales are staying, sales volume is going low. Now, if sales volume had increased and we were flooded with listings, then the supply and demand issue comes into play and then too much supply, similar or less demand prices will go down, but we're not currently experiencing that. So our condo market is really, really strong on the resale side. As for detached homes, now I'm not a low rise guy. Okay, and I, I, I can give you guys advice on it if you ever want to contact me. We sold a lot of low rise earlier in our careers, but I wanted to talk about it. Now, if you look at prices, okay, there's been some price drops, but if you're really looking at the city of Toronto, price hasn't really been that bad. In some areas, it's actually gone up. Some areas, it's gone down. So the city of Toronto, and this is why I'm a big fan of the 416, actually experienced the least drops in prices of the GTA. I know Whitby had some serious um, price differences. Uh, also, Markham experienced some as well, okay? But Toronto itself, the 416, fared quite well. And whoever wants these stats, you know, the, the webinar will be able to be mailed out to you. We are recording. Next slide, please. So resale condo market stats year over year. So let's look at this, okay? So from June 21 to June 22nd, prices were up across the board for condos in each area of Toronto. And we've seen the largest price jumps in Toronto East. Now we have a lot of development coming up in the East End from Toronto. I think it's the most um, underdeveloped part of our city. And look for some projects coming up. There is gonna be better deals to be had and I think the growth, the, the room for appreciation is the greatest in the East, okay? So if you look at sales volumes, essentially, okay, they dropped significantly. So it's a continuation of what we've discussed. Volume has dropped, the price is increasing. And if you look at new listings, new listings are also just slightly lower, but we haven't seen a flood because I believe our real estate consumers here in Toronto are very educated on the matter. And they know when it comes to real estate, when there's chaos you hold, when there's not, that's when you sell. Next slide, please. And again, here's a slide talking about resale detached year over year. And prices are up year over year in every part of the city of Toronto. So when people are saying that prices of tank and the market has crashed, in a year and year, a year over year comparison, no such thing has happened. The opposite is actually true. So if we're looking at some pre-con condo market stats year over year, these are some graphs that are showing how first graph shows the price per square foot and the appreciation, the increase in price per square foot that we've seen. So right now, okay, across the GTA, we're trading at about $1,400 a square foot for pre-construction. Of course, we're going to be $1,800 on Young Street, and we can get out to like $1,250, $1,300 in Etobicoke. But really, the average for the entire GTA is about $1,400. It's at exactly at $1,381, and that was the end of the first quarter of 2022. And if we see, there's been a constant appreciation since the first quarter of 2017. That's been five years of constant growth in condo prices. And for those of you that have been listening to me and you've bought five years ago, you are looking at this market now and being a very, very happy investor. Now, if we look at total condo sales, new construction sales, okay, we see that in the first quarter of 22, we had actually set a record for most sales. We surpassed first quarter of 2017 by oh, close to 143 units, okay? But now, as the market kind of has this specter looming over it, and there's a lot of confidence that's being lost, okay, I think you should capitalize on it and be one of the ones that goes away from the herd and invest because Warren Buffett says that the, when others are greedy, it's time for you to be cautious. And when others are cautious, it's time for you to be grateful. Now, 
This is a very important point that I want to hammer up. With interest rates rising and sales slowing, sales volume slowing, less people are shifting from renter to buyer. They're staying on as renter. Now, what has happened and what is currently happening in our rental market is we are seeing record rent increases, jumps from month to month to month. Every month, it's getting more and more expensive to rent in a city. So when sales volumes drop, you as a landlord, as a real estate holder, it is actually better for you because your rent is increasing and you're making more money month over month. This holds true in all major cities around the world. I have um, a lot of colleagues that work in Manhattan and live in Manhattan. And then say they say when sales slow, it is next to impossible to be able to find an apartment. And we're going to find very strong similarities here in Toronto over the next little while. Now, why is all this really happening? Now, I briefly touched on how people say it's interest rates and it's inflation, and they have a lot to do with it. But this is what I think really started this, and those were secondary factors. We had 18 months of unprecedented, unsubstantiated price increases and low rise. Buyer fatigue set in, resulting in sellers and buyers being unable to meet in the middle. Now, imagine putting an offer on 15 houses and not getting one or imagine even five, even three, okay? Not being able to know. Eventually you give up and you say, I'm not gonna buy right now. And that's basically what happened, okay? So the result, after buyers were unable to properly gauge what to offer in a home, most buyers have taken a back seat and are waiting to see where the market settles. Sellers, after witnessing their neighbors secure record sales numbers, current sellers will fall into two categories expecting far too much for their home and being unable to achieve it, resulting in pulled listings or not listing at all. Or the second group, sellers that are desperate will list, sell for less, and this temporarily artificially lowers sale prices to make it appear as if prices are dropping. Now, this is what we saw in the last couple months. People that bought at the peak and had to sell their home to take possession of the new home became desperate when they didn't sell in the first five, six, seven days. And that's what we saw. We saw a lot of desperation and a lot of decisions being decided by that emotion. And that's why I believe the price that we're currently seeing is artificially low and it will balance out over the next few months because those people that bought at the peak, their homes have already closed. So we're going to see this in the next little while. If interest rates rise today, it does not mean mortgages will renew today. And this is a very large misconception. Now, everybody who received a mortgage in the last three, four years, okay, since the B20 decision was passed and the new mortgage rules, has qualified at a significantly higher rate than the rate they were paying. So they are insulated with the ability to handle the, to the, the higher servicing that of that of their debt okay by qualifying at that higher rate so the vast majority of mortgages are five years this means that maturity date for mortgages are spread out five years for most canadians so even if they renew today some are going to renew this year some next year and this is going on for the five years everybody's spread out over different time frames but even if these people have to renew because they were qualified originally at a higher rate theoretically they should be able to carry the new debt Precon allows you to lock in a rate today. And if rate changes when you need a mortgage five years from now, you're insulated from that rate increase. And that's one of the reasons I love pre-construction. You put in a little bit of money today, spread out the deposit over a series of years, and you get your finished product years from now. Now, rates will not go up indefinitely as they must stay low to fuel the economy. Okay. And although high rates might curb inflation, they also slow economic growth. And what we do think is after they've raised rates, I believe there's going to be two more rate increases this year. Um, then we're going to go into a recession. Some people say we're already in one, but we're going to have to have two quarters of negative economic growth or stagnated economic growth to qualify as a recession. After those two quarters, I see the BOC lowering rates again, lowering them to stimulate the economy. And this is probably going to take next, till next summer. What happens when fewer projects get built? Now, 
Over the first six months of this year, 12,900 units were supposed to go up for sale. Because of the market conditions and the buyer sentiment that we're experiencing, okay, only 8,600 units have been brought to market. Sorry, and this was in the first, the second quarter of this year. Now, what does this mean? This means that 33%, one third of potential new units will not come to market five years from now. That means there's actually going to be less new inventory coming to market and that's going to further increase prices. So again, as more projects get delayed, that problem is actually an opportunity in disguise for you, the investor. And for those of you that are realtors, this is a great time to explain this to your clients. Pre-construction is a long game. It's a five-year investment. So if you're going to know what you're truly doing, you need to look five years ahead. And no one has crystal balls, but this is the closest thing to it. So we can foretell the future by see what's happening today. Now, I need to take a drink. I need. I needed to take a drink of water for this one because this is a topic I'm very passionate about. The number one enemy to affordability in our city is City Hall and their government greed, okay? So why is real estate so expensive? Government greed and ridiculous, outdated, stupid policy that they create. Government fees, taxes, and levies account for 20% of your pre-construction condo purchase price. That's right, 20% off the top. $800,000 one bed in Toronto, 160,000 pretty much is going to government. So how are they tackling affordability? By taking 20%. Imagine if units were 20% cheaper, how many more people would be able to buy and be a homeowner? If that wasn't bad enough, the government restructured Ontario. That's basically the government home warranty, uh, the Ontario government's home warranty program, okay? And now wait times for Tarion. And people say, why do we need to wait? Because it's part of your agreement of purchase and sale and you can't sell without it. So if the developer doesn't have Tarion, technically they can't sell, you can't get the ball rolling. But regardless, as a restructuring at Tarion last year has increased wait times by months, months. And people ask us, well, you said this project was gonna launch on say June 18th, but now you're saying it's delayed indefinitely. Well, the vast majority of the delays are caused by Tarion because you can't even find out when it is. They actually, you have to log in every day, look at your account if you're in a developer and every day you just find out. They're not, they can't tell you you'll be ready in 15, 20, 30. Hell, if you could know six months from now, at least you'd have a date that doesn't work. Not with Tarion. So that's another government blunder. Outdated and unrealistic green belts have put a stranglehold okay, on urban sprawl on de and development. So we have all this land around us, but we can't build a lot of it. And that's why the only option for our city is to go vertical. And that's why I've always said, the future is in density. And density when it comes to living and accommodations is up. NIMBY, not in my backyard. One neighbor can cause a really long delay. One passionate, driven neighbor in a community can cause a very, very long delay and create headaches for developers. I think the government should realize that we have a serious housing shortage and we need to take care of this and they should fast track development. And unfortunately, nobody has done that. Now, vast increases in construction costs and labor shortages. We have seen record increases in construction costs record increase of everything is more expensive. If you have done anything around your home or maybe you did a job, a side job or something, okay? And tried to buy material for anything, it is more expensive. Huge labor shortages. It is very difficult to find skilled workers as well. So we really need to tackle two things. Now, construction costs, I know there's, there's supply chain issues and all that, and that's a byproduct of COVID. I don't believe hardly anything is affected by the war in Ukraine, okay? Um, I won't even get into that, but I, I, I don't think that our fuel, 
got rise in the cost of fuel and all that and and all our supply chain shortages was really caused by Ukraine. So it, it's it's really just a leftover carryover of the disaster that was COVID. Okay. Now labor shortages again. Um, a lot of people are not working like they were. Okay. And it's very difficult for people to find skilled workers. So we need to tackle that or construction costs will continually go up. Now we go to our next slide. And this is a slide that I love because this really explains what the cost um, of, of developing a project is. And when you see the, the profit margin here, the developer's profit margin is anywhere from seven to 13%. Now, and if you, if you look at the government charges right underneath there, they're 18 to 22. So let's just say 20%. Developers making seven to 13, governments making 18 to 22. There's something wrong with this picture, especially in a city that needs housing very, very badly. And when you look at the other costs, besides construction and land, right? Government's the biggest taker of the pie. They get the biggest piece. And we really need to devalue this and you know, talk to your counselor, talk to your MP, P, okay? There's a, a lot of people need to know this. And, and it really gets under my skin when I see government officials, public officials get up in front of camera and the camera and, and start preaching as if they're in a pulpit about how developers need to pay their, their own portion and do their own part and so forth. I think it's you guys that have your, your arm in the, in the cookie jar, elbow deep, and it, it's unfair. So when you look at like the breakdown of government fees, taxes, and levies, it, it's, it's really amazing at how much they take. So for a developer to cut their profit and for, to sell at a lower price, it's just not feasible. And that's what I'm saying. I'm saying now is a great time to buy because as less projects get delayed, then less inventory will come to market when your project that you bought now will be ready, which means less inventory, your product will be worth even more. Inclusionary zone. Now, this has been tried and failed all over the world, but for some reason, the meeting of the minds down at City Hall decided to do it here because we're going to do it different. Okay. The City of Toronto has voted in an inclusionary zoning practice for all projects that are submitted for approval after this September. A minimum of 5% of all new development will be set aside for affordable housing. Now, this is low income working individuals that meet certain income thresholds. Okay. So I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing. But the problem is that. Think about it this way, okay? You have a developer with very low profit margins. They can't cover this cost or they'll be doing projects for free or losing money. Who is going to pay for the 5% of units that no longer contribute to the revenue? The buyer is. So based on our research with developers, reviewing their performers and so forth, this will increase the purchase price by approximately 8%, okay? So in the city of Toronto, we are going to see an increase of close to $60,000 overnight for units that are coming out, for, sorry, for projects coming out with an inclusionary zoning component. What effect will this have? Well, initially, these projects will be stigmatized and demand for precon will drop significantly. But the problem is they're being introduced slowly. So projects that are being delayed this year might sell next year. They don't have an inclusion or zoning component. Others will, et cetera, et cetera. Developers will stop building in the city of Toronto for a while because people will want to buy in these for the first couple of years. This will lead to an increase in resale condo pricing as there will be a lack of new product. So we're going to see a jump in the resale product. Suburban markets will start seeing a lot of condo development now, even though they already are, and that'll raise prices in the suburbs until it'll make more sense to buy in the city than the suburbs and then it'll reverse. But the moral of this story is for us today on this webinar is that if you own a new condo in a non-inclusionary zoning building, this will be worth its weight in gold. Trust me on this. This has precedent from numerous major metropolises around the planet. The same thing is going to happen here. 
Now, we are going to get into some great projects coming up, some projects that we're currently selling that I think are a fantastic opportunity. And we are going to introduce my good friend, Steve Sisikian. Okay. He is the vice president of Emblem Developments, and he knows everything about condos. And he's going to tell us why this project is a fantastic opportunity for you to purchase in the booming city of Hamilton. Steve, undo your mic. Thank you. I just did. Okay, great. Cost this great presentation so far. Uh, you know, I, I think you're giving a lot of good facts. And I think, you know, when I, when I hear all this, the number one thing that always stands to my mind is the price of housing is never going down in the city, in the GTA. It's not happening no time soon. And, you know, this is the, this is the reality we're living in. So uh, with that being said, said thank you for having me on this show it's it's a great honor and it's a great pleasure to be here um and i'm here to talk to all of you about what we're calling the project of 2022 we we are calling this the project of 2022 for three reasons number one is affordability we all know what the prices of downtown toronto are today you know well north of two thousand dollars a square foot so here's a chance to get in you know where, where investors still have a drive where, where end users still want to live um, and, and that's the number one factor. Number two factor is when I'm about to show you the, the next couple of slides of what we're bringing to downtown Hamilton, I think you'll all agree with me that there is no other building like this. This is going to be the landmark building of Hamilton. I can assure you, you will be amazed when you see what we're bringing in terms of amenities, in terms of architecture, in terms of design. And factor th number three is a very... This, and if, if, if if I can just jump in for a second, yeah. this project is going to set the stage for condos in Hamilton. And, and as those of you that, that follow First Access Condos know, we're constantly tuning into the, 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 the we're, we're constantly tuning in to the development departments and city to the building department. So we know what projects are coming years ahead of time. There is nothing that will be built comparable to this for the next decade in Hamilton. This is really the landmark of our generation. And Steve's going to tell us all about it. Thank you. Steve. All right. Sounds good. So before we get into the third and amazing factor, I just want to give you guys a kind of a, a background about Emblem. Emblem. Emblem has been around for just over three years in that short period of time between this project, you know, project that we've launched in the past and future developments. We're sitting at around 4,300 total units, which represents $3.3 billion of development value. We are a well-funded company and we are going stronger than ever. Factor number three, as you can see, furnishings by Louis Vuitton. What I can tell you about this is it's gonna automatically have the wow factor as soon as you walk into our buildings. Whatever you're renting, whatever you're selling, whatever the case be, you are sold the minute you walk into the lobby of this building. I can assure you this because I, I have, have experienced it myself firsthand. And I can tell you, your resale will be much higher than any other building in the surrounding areas. So as you can see, state-of-the-art amenities. This is downtown Hamilton, everyone. This is not Miami. This is not Las Vegas. The pool that you see is what we are offering as an amenity package. State-of-the-art gym, uh, close to 20,000 square feet of amenities, three separate lobbies. And all these amenities are shared by all three towers, which will keep, which will keep the amenities... Um, the maintenance fee is nice and low. So after doing a lot of research in Hamilton, I think we'll all agree on this call that immigration is the number one factor why our housing will always be in demand and keep our prices rocket high. You know, 400,000 next year, this year, the year after 1.2 million, which basically means 236,000 people are coming to the city of Hamilton, which creates 122,000 new jobs. You know, we call this project the perfect transit hub because it's a multifaceted transit hub. And what I mean by that is it has a go train already there, a go bus. LRT has been approved and it is coming very, very soon, just steps away from the design district. As an avid con condo investor myself, the number one factor that I look at is universities. I think this is the number one reason why I invest. And, you know, it, it's, it's an ongoing investment pool of university students, over 30,000 students at McMaster, which is ranked top four in Canada, only 3,900 students for residents on campus. If you do the math there alone, there's already a huge shortage. 
the next one is the amount of infrastructure coming into Hamilton over $4 billion between the LRT and this one here, which is the $140 million revitalization of the waterfront. There's a massive, massive boom happening in, uh, happening in Hamilton. There's already over 18,000 applications for new condominiums in the works. So it is happening very, very soon. And the last one I found most intriguing was, you know, I've always known Hamilton to be blue, a blue collar town, steel town, the hammer. In fact, there's a huge change in the landscape of labor and tech is leading that charge. Let me tell you, it's ranked top four in Canada and it's actually ranked higher than any city in the US. So this is just a, a map we put together with, with the GO train station and just how far it is and also the LRT. Uh, but what the one stat that really stood out to us most was the 97 walk score. This is the kind of walk score that you don't find in Mississauga, Brampton, you know, Vaughan. This is the kind of walk score that you'll find the Young and Bloor in downtown Toronto. And here at the design district, it's a walker's paradise. 97 is a massive, massive walk score. So these are the key stats we were able to pull, as I told, as I said earlier, over $4 billion of new infrastructure coming to Hamilton. The city is on a massive surge, lots of housing. And, you know, this is just a part of, of the huge growth that's happening there. You know, there's the, the population growth numbers, as you can see, over 18,000 condominiums already proposed. And this number is just rising, you know, uh, based on affordability and other factors. Hamilton is definitely on the up and up. And as you, as you can see, there's a very, very healthy gain in resale and also new construction prices sitting at 34 and 13 percent, respectively. I give it back to you. Thank Costas. you, Steve. Thank you very much. And we'll be in touch. And everybody, I just want you to know, I truly believe that this is going to be the landmark deciding project that puts Hamilton on the map condo wise. And here's a stat that not many people know. The price to purchase in Hamilton is less than two thirds to purchase in Toronto, but the rents are 75 to 80% of Toronto's. And when you run the numbers, you'll be very, very positive every month in comparison to buying here. So look at Hamilton, look at the design district. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, everyone. Okay, now, everybody knows that we're very condo focused and, and you know we, we started off really promoting the Toronto area, the core of the city, and then we went out to the sub markets as the sprawl started expanding. And we don't really do much up in cottage country, but there's something great happening at Horseshoe Valley. Horseshoe Valley was purchased by Freed, okay, and a couple of partners, and they're redoing, they have a major, major, major revitalization plan, okay? And the Horseshoe residence at Horseshoe Valley is going to be a beautiful condominium project, okay, that offers amenities, year-round amenities that are second to none, and nothing is really comparable to it, and I think it's a great investment opportunity that we should take a look at. It's located within prime location. Residents and visitors will have access to a world of outdoor recreation just from our doorstep. Now look at that. That's the summertime and right next to the ski hill. So whether it's the summer or the winter, you can have a lot of here. It's a four season world-class resort, okay? You'll have full access to the resort's bar and grill, tap house, brew house, alpine cafeteria. You can pick up a quick bite after hitting the slopes. All season outdoor chalet, chalet patio. Okay, there's so much to do. You can swim, hike, so much year round fun. So, really take a look at this. And with the prices of, of, of cottages really exploding during the time of COVID, this could be a fantastic alternative. You still get out of the city, but you have the brand new condo lifestyle that we all love. Okay, turnkey, just close it, go back to the city, go there. It's a lot less maintenance than having a traditional cottage, but you have all the benefits here in a brand new project. So here are the reasons. Number one, Horseshoe Resort's a four season family friendly recreation getaway, and it's only 20 minutes north of Barrie and one hour north of Toronto, okay? So it's not far. Residence is home to 29 ski and snowboard runs and over 30 kilometers of Nordic trails. So you can do cross country skiing and alpine. In the summer, there's golf, swimming, tree talk, um, tree talk, tree top trekking, and much more. Number two, green space. 
The resort is surrounded by untouched forests, lush parklands, conservation areas, nature trails that you can explore on foot or bicycle. And new residents will overlook a new man-made lake that will be great for swimming in the summer and skating in the winter. So this is actually one of the pictures we had seen already. It's right next to the building in between the actual residences and the ski slopes is going to be this man-made lake. That'll be a great place to swim. Why swim in the pool when you can swim in this beautiful lake on Sandy Beach? It's great, and it's only an hour north of the city. Lifestyle amenities, full access to all the resort amenities, including seasonal entertainment, dining option, the resort's own AMBA spa. So it's going to be a brand new spa for residents. The city of Barrie is 20 minutes away, which offers everything you need of the big city, but it's just, just far enough to give you the tranquility that you want, but close enough to give you the convenience that you still need. Highway access, conveniently situated just minutes from the 400, Central Ontario's major thoroughfare that runs north to Cottage Country and south to the GTA. Motorists can have easy access to the highway and drive south to Toronto in just an hour after enjoying a nice relaxing weekend getaway up north. And I guarantee you, now that we work remotely, okay, and most work, most businesses are going to be shifting to some type of hybrid model, you could spend a lot more time up here than you thought you would when you originally purchased it. And you'll always have the option of renting it out so it can also make you money. And five, let's talk about free developments. Peter Fried is an experienced developer who has a passion for envisioning things that no one else has seen before. So now he's buying up cottage country properties, redoing them, making them world-class resorts, similar to what he was doing here with projects like Galleria, where he envisioned this massive master plan community, just a gem out of nowhere. Okay, and this is what he's doing up here. Free Developments is an award-winning development company that strongly believes in a live, work, and play in your neighborhood mentality. They set out to build what they call lifestyle hubs, helping to enhance life and connectivity in the community. And this is going to be the mantra that this is based on. Now, coming back to our bread and butter, coming back to the center of the real estate universe in Canada, okay, the core of Toronto, we're coming down to 8 Elm Street at Young and Elm, situated right in between Girard to the north and Dundas to the south, across the street from Ryerson University. This is 68 stories, 807 units. This, in my opinion, is going to be the Toronto project of the year. Okay, It's in the heart of downtown Toronto, just north of Young and Dundas Square. Perfect transit score, perfect walk score. You can't get any better than this. And this is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful designed buildings that I have ever seen. I do a lot of business with Capital Developments, the developer, okay? I have bought in numerous of their projects. I like the way they do things. I love their quality of work and I love how they take a vision and they make it into a reality. And when we, I was helping them pick the exterior design of the building, I think it is absolutely stunning, okay? These new downtown Young Street condos will be integrated into the new developments palladium to ensure the street, the street's historic character is properly preserved. So there it's currently a heritage building. That is where the sales office is gonna be. They have a 15 foot scale model, okay, that's being built for this. And I'm gonna be doing presentations at the sales center. I'm gonna do everything. This is coming out in September, but I wanted everybody to know this. I personally am buying here and a lot of my friends will be buying here as well. And that's how much I believe in this. Next slide, please. Now, we talked about Eight Elm. That's our sneak peek. More information is being released. I'm going to go look at floor plans next week. So I'll be able to give you the first access condos, two thumbs up after I take a look at them. We spoke about the horseshoe residences. A little outside what we usually do, but I think the opportunity is right for everyone to make some money and also be able to use that condo. So you can rent it out similar to an Airbnb. Okay, there's going to be a program, but then you can also use it. And trust me, you'll be using it more than you think. And we talked about design district. 930 units of beautiful architecture, top of the line finishes, each lobby's budget for furniture from Louis Vuitton is $500,000. The interior design company is Birdie Felix. They do world-class hotels. 
They don't use drywall, they use natural stone to clad walls. So think about this type of project. Now we're gonna talk about a few projects that we are currently selling, and I'm a big fan of all of them. The first one is Park Place at the VMC, okay, by Smart Living, Smart Centers, Residential Division, okay? They are building a slew of condos up there. They're very bullish on the area as we are here at First Texas Condos. And this is Towers 2, Tower 2 of 10, okay, right in the VMC. The Dawes North by Marlin Springs. So a few months ago, we sold the Dawes South building. Now we're going to sell the North, okay? It's steps from two different subway stations. One's at Main, one's at Victoria Park. It steps to the GO station, and it's in an area where five other projects are already approved, and they're going to start to sell in the next year or so. So you're getting in first into an area that's going to explode. And remember, the best way to make maximum appreciation is to be the first, not the last. Curio on the Queensway in Etobicoke by Marlin Spring again, and a Mac world renowned for building some of the craziest condos in Dubai and the Middle East. Okay, this boutique building is fantastically priced, priced to sell, great deposit structure, very convenient for our investors. And we've sold quite a lot of units here, but I wanted to bring it up. There is some quality inventory left, not much, but I think if you're looking for price per square foot buy in the city in a great area right on the Queensway, this could be it. Now, another great downtown project for those of you that can't wait for an 8-Elm is Electro by Menkes. Menkes, the name says it all. Nobody does it better than Menkes. They have been around for decades and they are a world-class builder. Now, they're building Electra on, Dund on, Dur on Dundas, just past Jarvis, okay? A lot of condos are being built currently and have recently taken occupancy in that immediate area. And this area is really changing. It is so close to everything. You can walk everywhere downtown. Now that's gonna conclude our presentation for today. I want everybody to know. Now, if there's one thing you're gonna take home from here, okay, is don't be second, our motto. And why do we say don't be second? Because victory goes to those who don't delay those to act, not procrastinate. And this is really an opportune time to make fortunes in our real estate market. There was a slight cool down, a slight downturn right now. And that is the time that those of you that are ready to invest should capitalize on it. Trust me, by the time your condo that you bought this year is built five years from now, you're gonna see a third to half of less inventory come to market when yours is ready. Your price will skyrocket. And that's why you invest with First Access Condos. So we can make you the most money possible. Thank you, everybody. Have a, have a Wait, wonderful no, we have evening. Questions. Hold on. Questions. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm infamous for, for jumping off. Let's see some questions. <laughs> Ashley, go ahead. Sorry, so oh, Jeff- I'm looking at the questions. Know. Yeah, so Jeff just wants to know, with inclusionary zoning, will the developers not make the ongoing profit from the property management slash landlord, thereby offsetting the cost? Okay, first of all, when you are expecting to sell a unit in a million dollars and then you are going to get rent from it, okay, it's a drop in the bucket. So considering it won't be market rent, it'll actually be lower than market rent, they're not really offsetting anything. And they have to, um, it, it's basically to take the money off the top because they're not getting the revenue, right? So that there's a lot of things that need to be figured out. But if you're looking at 5% of a building, if you have 500 units, okay, 5% is 25 units. That's, it can easily be $25 million of lost revenue. And I don't care what you're charging for rent. You're not going to get that money back. So there's, there's, there's a, a large discrepancy um, with the amount of money that's coming in and the amount of money that they were expecting to when they did the pro formas on this. Okay. And it will be calculated in it and revised. And basically we're gonna be responsible paying for it. Now, Highmark and Nahid Harbor, these are two great projects that will be coming to the east end of our city, Pickering for Highmark and Oshawa for Nahid Harbor. We are waiting, Jeff, on Nahid Harbor, Nahid to actually get back to us. We were expecting late summer to launch that. 
and I had just spoken to the head of Highmark, okay? It was the same individual that took care of us at um, the landing, okay? And that has been delayed to September as well. So we also have the W coming to Whitby, and I think that's coming out in September as well. So look for fall, the latest, where we'll be launching all our Durham product, okay? What else do we have? This is a question from Lisa. If I had to pick one bill that you would think would be the best return on investment, if you yourself were only able to buy one, what would it be? Now, very good question. And I know I brought up ADELM, but at about $1,750, $1,800 a square foot, um, that might be a little difficult for a lot of people to buy as a first unit in their portfolio. I really like Hamilton. And I'm very big on when you make your first investment, you need to make the most to be able to invest in the way that we preach where we buy one unit, we make a nice return on it, we, re we refinance, pull money out, and then buy more condos and keep doing that. And for that to work, you need to make the most you can. So if I was going to pick one from the projects I just talked about, I would go with Design District. It's going to be around 1150 average a square foot, maybe about 1200 for one beds, maybe about 1050 for two beds. But the reality is, even if it's $50 a square foot more than other product in Hamilton, the building, the product, the finished product that you will be getting will demand so much more in rent, in price per square foot when you go to lease it out or you go to sell it because it is the landmark building. Everybody is willing to pay a little bit more for something that's a lot better. Well, this is going to be that much better than its competition. Okay. I believe we had another question too that I saw coming briefly. Hold a second. They're also asking for an yes. on ACRA. Yes, I just pulled that up. No, so Armin, um, yes, we had an update on ACRA two weeks ago. Uh, sorry, about 10 days ago, actually. I'm very literal. Um, and it's been delayed to September, okay? So expect it to be a very, very busy September. I love ACRA, okay? Curated Properties is building it. And any project that they have built demands the most in rental rates and price per square foot in the area after it's built. That's what they build, they build the best. And Acra's pricing, it was expected to come around 1,500 a square foot. That is really, really fair. That's Midtown at Young and Eglinton. And we just showed you the average for the whole GTA is 1381. So it's just slightly higher than the average for the GTA in what's gonna be the new center, the new heart of the city of Toronto once they finally build that subway which I guarantee you will be ready by the time ACRA is built, okay? And for those, those, of you, those of you that know how long it takes, you'll know that that's a joke because we've been waiting for two years for them to open it. They're still about a year away um, and ACRA will take about four years to build. Do we have any more questions? One second, we do, great. Um, we have Alina. Hi, Alina. Okay. For currently selling condos from the side we just saw, as well as Ohash from Hamilton, do they follow? No, inclusionary zoning will not be in any projects that we see selling probably until early 23. So when a project gets approved, it doesn't start selling right away. There's a process. So these are applications that are submitted to the city, not final approvals. So after they submit their application and they get a um, preliminary approval, Okay, it takes months, if not a year for product to come for them to actually reach the launch. So we're going to see this start to trickle in next year, but they'll be intermingled with projects that are non IZ because of delays. So nothing's IZ yet. Okay, and this is only for the city of Toronto. So only in the core of Toronto, the 416. What are your thoughts on London, Ontario better than invest in Hamilton? London is actually a really good price. And we have a project called Spring Bank with some very good price per square foot, which is very close to Western University. So please reach out to Ashley at Ashley at firstaccessconduits.com and she'll send you some information, okay? We just sold three units there. Um, I think it was on Friday. And the price per square foot is fantastic, okay? I think investing in London, if you're close to Western, is a good investment. Okay, and it's going to be a little bit better price. Uh, well, it depends what a little bit is, but it's going to be significantly better price than Hamilton. Great opportunity for London. Um, with Hamilton, they're both good investments. It's really what fits your budget better. 
Let me see if I have anything else. Nope, you got them all. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Again, I am always available to answer your text messages and calls and emails. My staff and myself would like to thank you for taking time from your very busy schedules to listen to us. And I want everybody to have a wonderful evening, a great summer, and let's all make some money. Thank you, guys. Bye.